Hi, my name is Marshall, and this is Waveform. How do vehicle sounds work in video games? To be honest, there's no good answer to that question, and if there is, I certainly don't know it. But really, the reason you can't answer it is because there are huge differences in the way every game approaches something called implementation. Implementation is the thing that separates audio for movies and TV with audio for games. Let's say you're a sound designer on the new Star Wars movie, and you're making an explosion sound for a battle sequence. You already know just by watching the clip how far away the sound's gonna be, what kind of atmosphere it plays in, what kind of material it explodes on, and what debris will get thrown around. Those are all things that'll influence what sounds you layer together and how you mix your final design to get it to sound right in the clip. When designing an explosion for a game though, you know none of those things. The player could be right next to the blast, 50 meters away, it could happen outside, or maybe in a parking garage. It's a much less predictable problem to solve than in film. If you've ever heard of movies or TV referred to as linear media and games as nonlinear media, that's what they're talking about. A film will play back the audio the same way each time, but in games, you implement all the sounds as best you can, and then you hand the reins over to the player to experience their own unique soundscape driven by their decisions and their actions. On top of all this, every game engine and implementation software approaches things completely differently. A technique you learn for designing a sound in one program may look entirely different in another. That's why I usually don't talk about implementation on Waveform that much, even though it really is one of the most important parts of game audio. To explain it right would add another 10 minutes to every episode. Not to mention the viewer retention rates on technical jargon are, as you might expect, quite low. Sound guys, they're like little babies. Oh, carry me, carry me from set to set. But today is different. Today we're designing sounds for a sci-fi vehicle, and because vehicles are often the most complex sounds that get implemented into any particular game, we have no choice but to talk about I reached out to Chase Combs, project audio director at Turn 10 Studios. He has worked on the Forza Motorsport franchise for almost 10 years, and there isn't a single audio system in the game that he hasn't either designed, contributed to, or supervised since joining the company. He knows much more about vehicle sound than I do. So today we're gonna to learn from him and then use what we learned to design our own unique vehicle sound for the Sparrow in Destiny. I started out just by asking him about some of the unique challenges that he confronts when designing sounds for vehicles in Forza. You know, designing for cars is unique in that um, everybody has an experience with cars, so they automatically kind of can, can smell whether the behavior is off. Translating physics parameter data into audio like behaviors um, is where it's a little bit of the uh, the um, the special sauce or the, like the, the problem solving where it's like okay well I can find a clip of how a car sounds in the real world but how why it sounds that way um, and what kind of technical things are happening that are actually causing that to to sound in a particular way and then trying to deconstruct that down into the game side of okay I have this huge amount of physics data that I can kind of troll through you know. Um, sometimes it's combining different physics data parameters to kind of get something that sounds close. Ultimately, I need it to sound like this, this uh, performance reference. Um, now, how do I get that? So that, that's usually the, the, the more challenging part of, uh, of building cars for, for a simulator. Chase is hitting on the heart of implementation here. In a game like Forza, where the entire focus is on cars, at any given moment during gameplay, the game engine is tracking dozens of values that describe the current state of the car. Things like speed, engine RPM, current gear, turn angle, the material under the tires, etc. As a sound designer, it's Chase's job to take that huge amount of data and create sounds that react dynamically and believably to it. Sometimes it's not always obvious, though, how a certain sound should react to a certain parameter. If a physics programmer was able to tell you the tire pressure of a particular tire on a car, would you design it so that the higher the tire pressure, the higher the pitch of the tire sounds? Would that make sense, or would the car just sound less realistic? It's hard to know. Those are things that can only be learned through experience and experimentation. Sometimes there's, there's a balance between um, uh, authenticity and believability. Somebody may have an idea of what a particular gun or a car sounds like based on their own personal experience. Now that could be, they've seen it in person, um, they've seen it on YouTube, they've seen it in cinema, like, okay, a Dodge Viper. Well, what would that sound like to you? It's like, okay, well, I'm thinking of this one reference, which may not be the same as this other reference. And even though they're the same car, we now have two different opinions of what that car should sound like. And, you know, there's always going to be an audience that wants absolute realism. You know, at the end of the day, it's still an entertainment product. And I think there's a lot of people that don't understand that, like, in the case of guns, like, most guns just sound like a pop. You know, a stock Honda Civic is not a great sounding car. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, my job is to make it feel believable, but it's still somewhat engaging and exciting to the player. Because today we're making a sci-fi vehicle sound, we don't have to worry as much as someone on the Forza team about believability and authenticity. But Chance is totally right that sound designers are often faced with a choice between making something sound more grounded in reality or more hyper-realistic and over the top. 
Designing with real world recordings of the thing that you're making is one way to do that. But Chase also mentioned another way that we can use today in our own design too. We also try to find ways to make sure that the sound feels like it's reactive in the space. So we have a lot of acoustic modeling so that way if I'm next to a hard surface wall or if I'm in a tunnel or if I'm in an open field, like the sound of the car interacting with the space around it is always changing also, which just helps kind of seat that object in the, you know, in the world, um, which immediately makes it feel more, more believable on screen. Acoustic modeling and digital reverb have been used in games for some time now, but as hardware improves, more and more of these effects are done in real time in the game engine. One of those effects that's starting to become more popular is convolution reverb. Convolution reverb doesn't work like a normal digital reverb effect. A standard digital reverb asks you to provide it information like how large the space is, how long the fade out should be. But a convolution reverb instead asks you to feed it something called an impulse response. An impulse response sounds like this. These are real recordings of short, loud sounds, like a balloon popping, for example. But instead, the pop has been cut off, and now we're just left with the tail. A convolution reverb plugin takes this recording and uses it to create a reverb effect that emulates the space that the sound happened in. This is my voice in a cathedral, for example. Or in a small office building. Or in a power station in Berlin. We're going to use convolution reverb to color the two different spaces in our sparrow clip, but more on that later. Let's get started on our sound. If you'd like to see the hour-long full breakdown video of this session, you can join my Patreon for access to that video. This is the clip we're going to be designing to. So first I got some source material to work with. One thing I grabbed was an iPhone recording of a few different perspectives of my air conditioner. Then I also grabbed a recording of my friend Judson's dishwasher door, which makes a very cool metallic creaking sound. These two sounds alone should be more than enough to make our engine. First I made a looping sound out of the air conditioner and sent it to a resonator plugin that'll give it a metallic ring as if it were coming out of a pipe. Then I added some tremolo. This is one of the effects that we can increase and decrease with the speed of the vehicle, similar to the way a game would update a parameter in real time. As the tremolo gets faster, we can make the engine sound like it's working harder. There are also a bunch of little moments that we can add detail to in our fake simulation, like when the sparrow's briefly airborne for a moment, or when it banks left or right for a turn. I'm going to create some variations in pitch for when that happens to make it seem even more like the sparrow's reacting to the input of the player. If we were implementing our sound into a real game, this is the point where we would have to look at the physics information available to us and decide which parameters should drive the changes in the sound. But since we're doing it to a linear clip, we can fake it with automation. Then I added another layer of pitched air conditioner sound on top of this, but this time with no real effects on it, just some distortion and EQ to get it to sound like the physical flame that's coming out of the back of the sparrow. That sounded like this. By cranking up the volume and distortion when the sparrow is moving quickly, we can make it feel even more reactive and interesting. Next, we have to add some one-shot sounds, like the player getting onto the sparrow, the boost, and the physics impacts on the rocks. I made these using samples in my own sound effects library. Again, if you'd like to see the in-depth tutorial of how I layered these together, you can check out my Patreon page. Last but not least, I added a layer of ambience and reverb to the clip to, as Chase would say, seat the object into the world. For the outdoor clip, I added a small amount of this wide ambient reverb, and then as we transition into the cave, it will swap out for a much deeper, more intense cave reverb. All right, so now we've got all of our layers made. Here's what they sound like individually and all together in the final mix.
for an iPhone recording of an air conditioner, I think we made something that sounds pretty good. Our version may not be one tenth as intricate and detailed as a Forza car engine would be, but I hope it still illustrates to you just how unique and cool a challenge it is to get to design a vehicle sound for a game. I encourage you to all give this a try yourself. Get out there and record some audio and turn it into a spaceship engine. See how it turns out. I do have an exciting announcement before ending the video today, and that's that soon there's going to be Waveform t-shirts. I had some merch design for the channel that will be available as soon as the next Patreon incentive is reached, and I wanted to give you guys a little preview of what it's going to look like. I love how they turned out. Whenever the goal is reached, the storefront's going to go live on Teespring, and you guys can display your audio love loud and proud. I also really want to thank the top patrons right now helping us get to that goal. Thanks to Chase Combs for the great interview, and thanks to you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.